Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back. Today we're going to be starting something new, a grand adventure in the depths of space here, playing Duskers. So, if you've seen the Welcome To video, you know kind of what this game's all about. We're basically a drone-based, text-controlled, space-salvaging escapade. So let's get out there and see what it's all about. We're starting a new campaign here, so there's nothing already unlocked, and we'll see how it goes for us. There's a good chance we'll die a horrible death out here in the depths of space, especially if we encounter new enemies and things that I haven't found yet. But until then, hopefully we'll have a grand old time. So, let's get this adventure started. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. So of a critical warning here. We have only six days worth of fuel for our one crew. Things are not going too well in our little spaceship here, but we have a bunch of things nearby which could prove interesting. So, this starting galaxy is very spread out. It's going to be hard to get around it, really. We have an outpost here, which we can't get to without a transporter. Interesting. It's a class of rebel, too. I haven't seen that before. Interesting things here we're discovering already. Now, before we start anything else, it's important to note that our story is continued from adventure to adventure. So we have these logs here, which tell us a little bit about what's been going on. And so far, we've learned a couple different things. As our objectives say, we've been trying to learn about the possibility of a Grey Goo scenario where nanobots have been causing problems. But since we haven't been able to really get into a space station and scan all the rooms properly, it's been difficult to do it well. As far as a potential pandemic, we've found some potential information here, but we have to try and some, find some more by investigating uh, trading posts. And we have the potential for war problems having caused our massive uh, death in the, in the uh, entire universe. So we're trying to find defense outposts and interface with local terminals to find out more there. But it may still be difficult if we have a hard time getting an interface. Let's see what our drones have on them as we're starting off here. Our current ship, the Justice Rider, has three drones to begin with. So let's investigate what they have. Alright, pretty standard loadout it seems as you start. You get the same stuff every time. So we have one drone here with a motion sensor, which allows us to see enemies in nearby rooms, and which rooms nearby are safe, with a somewhat reliable outcome. We also have a gather upgrade, so we can pick up things we find along the way. Jeff here has a generator on him, and Tommy has a tow and a lure. Alright, well, that's all well and good. We're going to quickly rename these guys. So, we are going to quickly rename Drone 1 to Odin. We are going to quickly rename Drone 2 to Thor, there we go, and we're going to quickly rename Drone 3 to Loki. Fantastic. Now we have a team worthy of our missions, so let's get down there and investigate the Lark of Life, our first ship. What do we have down here? It is fairly stable as far as age is concerned. It's filled with two different types of infestation, which is unfortunate for our first ship, and its hull integrity is only medium, so we may run into problems down here. But let's get started and see what happens. Hmm. We have a bit of a message here. Five. Only automated response from any major relay. Stem. I hope to hell that... elaborate interference... Heading for the near Captain M. Hmm. So I know there's some kind of problems going on, but we don't know anything else about this from this message, so we're just going to have to get started. So here is our interface. We have two versions of our, our, uh, our direct interface with our drones. We have this overview, which allows us to command them remotely easily via the console and see what's all going on, or we can go down to the individual drone level like this and see what they can see. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to start off with a very simple command. By typing in begin, it'll send our first two drones into the first room and power the generator inside. There is not a lot of room in there at all, is there? Okay. Odin, you're going to need to gather us that yellow scrap on the ground, thank you. That'll be useful later. Is there anything in this room either? No. Okay, well, let's do our first motion sense then and see if we can't get any information on the nearby rooms. Nope, that is really not useful. Alright, Odin, nice try. We only have 50 uses of the motion sensor before we have to manually recharge it. We get any other information here? Yes. The room through D4 is safe, so let's open D4 and send Odin to investigate and get a look at what we're looking at here. There is a depowered console in this room, but that's all we can see. Hmm. 
This is really not a very useful star for us, is it? Without any more information, it's going to be pretty difficult for us to investigate much further. Let's do one more attempt at a motion sensor in this room, see if we can get anything. No, there's re results are inconclusive all over. Alright, well we're going to try something a little bit less reliable then. If we can get information on R8, which we still can't... Oh boy. Alright, we're going to have to take some risks here because the game does not want to cooperate and give us any information on the starting game. We're just going to have to open some doors and hopefully nothing immediately kills us. Because until we can get a little bit more information, there's really not much else we can do here. So we'll gather this resource. What is this? We have an empty ship upgrade slot, sadly. Alright, I was hoping we'd get lucky and find something cool there, but we did not. There's nothing in the room. More motion data still tells us nothing, so what we're going to do is we're just going to have to explore it, because otherwise we have literally no information at all here, and hopefully there's nothing here trying to kill us. And since we got lucky again, that's fine. We'll send this uh, drone here to gather the fuel. It's in the green space there, and the scrap in the yellow one. And then maybe we'll be able to get a little bit more information from our next one. Unfortunately, there was literally nothing in that fuel spot, so it was a little bit deceptive. The motion sensors have given us literally nothing. They've definitely made these much less reliable than they used to be. You used to be able to use your motion sensors and uh, get a pretty good understanding of what was on the map, but now they are pretty consistently giving us no information. This looks interesting though. There is actually an upgrade here, although there is also a vent in here. This is a transporter upgrade. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to try and grab that nice and quick. We're going to have to navigate... Navigate Loki, we'll send him over to R6, separate our commands with semicolons, do a tow here, so we'll pick that up, navigate Loki to R1, so he comes back to the ship, and tow again to drop it off. In the meantime, we will send Odin up into here, do a motion sensor, and see if we can't find anything else. Okay, there is an enemy in there, let's close D5, maybe we'll be safe to explore D6 now, it's hard to say though. That's the only room we got any information on at all, which makes this pretty inconclusive results. Let's take a risk here. We're starting off, it's a dangerous world. We found a downed drone, this is fantastic. This is really good. So we're gonna close D6 now, D17. So if anything comes through that vent, they won't be able to get us. Open D18 and we'll keep investigating. So John, what do you have on you? You have a scan on you. Okay. Well, let's grab that then. We'll take that onto Odin right now. I'm not entirely sure what the scan does. I think it's similar to the ship scan control in the interface, which will give us information about anything that may be hidden in the room. There's another transporter upgrade in here. All right. Well, let's get Loki again. We're going to need to bring them all the way back over here, so we'll repeat our previous commands if we can here. We'll go navigate... Loki to R5, then tow again, navigate, oh, I have to say what I'm towing, I think, don't I? Let's say tow John, I think that'll work. Then we can say navigate Loki to R1 and tow. And he should head over this way and pick up that robot and then head back to base. We can pick up the ship upgrade as well and probably sell that if it's, uh, if it's not going to be too difficult to make two trips all the way across the ship, but we'll see what happens. So if I run a scan here, that should give us some more information about this room. Okay. It didn't reveal anything new, but you can see that this room has now been scanned by the green lines on it. I'm not sure what that does beyond just giving us any more information about the area, but it seems interesting. Hmm. What if I could say help scan? Scans the current room for items, yes. Scans may reveal items undetected by visual inspection. That's what I thought. Okay, perfect. So. Why is there nothing on my back anymore? Did we drop something somewhere? I feel like we dropped something. Okay, Thor, you're in the way. Move over to here. Start the generator again. Did we drop something? It feels like we did, because there was nothing on our back there, but I don't know where we would have dropped. Did we not even pick him up? No, apparently we didn't pick him up. We just started the tow command and didn't pick anything up. Alright, sometimes this kind of problem happens. 
it's unfortunate, but that's the issue with you not actually directly controlling things. Sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you think it's going to do. So we're going to pick up John. There we go. Did I ask? No, I told to John. Hmm, weird. Let's send them back to where we need them to be, and then we'll get them to drop that off, and we can start over. No, oh, I didn't mean to do that. All right. So, there we go. Navigate. Three, R1, and so The commands sometimes get a little bit confusing as it's easy to make mistakes, but hopefully we'll be able to get through this without too much trouble. Motion sensor's literally telling us nothing here. We've got a good amount of reward for this first area, so we may just leave with our spoils and not keep tempting fate here, because uh, we know there's an enemy in R7, there may very well be an enemy in R2, and uh, through the door through D2, and there's no easy way for us to check that. So. We may just take what we found so far and run. So, send Loki to R5, just do a simple tow command, navigate back to R1, and tow again to drop off that last upgrade there. Overall, it's not looking super great for our ability to explore here safely. It's possible that if we can get a good motion sense happening on R4, we'd be able to open door 7 and see if something comes through. But it's been pretty unreliable so far, so I'm not sure if I really want to tempt fate with that. But uh, we'll give it one try here and see if we can get a good motion sense coming. Alright, so we're going to close D19. We're going to move Odin into the corner here, so if we have to get through, we'll be fine. Activate the motion sensor. Nope, still no reliable information. Alright, in that case, we're going to leave. It could be worth exploring further, but we know there's two different types of infestation on this ship at least, and it's not worth us dying trying to get into rooms that we have no information on and are probably full of enemies. So, we are going to leave this station alone. Not bad for our first mission, though. We got our fourth drone, and we got another couple little upgrades for us, which is nice. So, that'll have to do. We've got four scrap, and we've survived for our first day. So, we enter our ship configuration and equip one of these transporter upgrades. There we go. I'm not sure what this thing actually does, but if we check our health menu here, we should be able to figure it out. If we go into the ship upgrades and investigate what the transport does. Okay. Destination room must have an active signal, indicated on the schematic view. We can transport through the docking bay. Okay, it looks like it's a teleporter. It looks like it's a teleporter. So we can say transport one drone to R2 and it'll warp them there. That sounds pretty handy. So from our drone bay we can get anywhere else we need to go. And now we have the ability to get into this if we can get over there. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Let's head down to this station, we'll head over here, and hopefully we'll have enough fuel by then to get to this outpost, because I've never been to one of these before, and that could be pretty interesting. For now, we're going to head over in this direction, though, and see what we can do. Now, we do need to do a little bit of other work before we head into another ship, so we're going to go to the modifications menu and use that to repair John. We're not going to repair him all the way, we're just going to repair him up enough to make him usable, and that'll have to do, and we'll activate that so he now has enough health to be brought on missions. From our upgrades menu here, there's a couple of other things we can do. As you can see, we can upgrade drones to increase their speed or their max HP. We can also upgrade some of these upgrades that have already been created. For example, lures, we can add more lures to since they're consumable. We can also add a magnetic clamp to them so that if we open an airlock with this in the room, it doesn't get pulled out into space, so that's potentially pretty handy. Or uh, in some cases, we can do some other nice things to them. But as it stands, there's not a whole lot of options available to us. So we're not going to worry too much about it. We're going to keep exploring and see what else we can do. Let's board this salvage type C ship and see what we can find. But first, we have one last thing to do. We have to make sure that John is in our active roster and we need to rename them. Is it Freya with a J? I can never remember how to spell Freya. I think it has a J in it. Let me double check this quickly. There's so many different ways to spell it is the other problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, it can be spelled all kinds of different ways. Oh, we'll leave it like this. This is Freya. Adding to our Norse pantheon. Fantastic. So, let's keep going. We're going to board this ship and see what we find here. 
should probably give some things to Freya. Let's unequip the scan for now. For Moten, I don't, honestly, it doesn't really matter here. Problem is, without any upgrades on Freya, it doesn't make much sense to bring her on this mission. She'll be able to pick up upgrades if we find them on drones, though, so maybe we'll bring her anyway. We might just not use her this time. So, let's launch this mission and see what happens. Alright, no information here. We know they were bounty hunting as a salvage ship, which seems kind of unusual, but all their data is corrupted. So let's get in here and take a look. Ooh, okay. So those are rooms we can teleport to. Interesting. Interesting. It is specifically marked based on the rooms individually. It has nothing to do with whether or not they're powered or anything like that. Hmm. Well, let's get in here and start. Oh, hello. That's an immediate drone. Okay. Loki, you're gonna go grab that. Ian here. What do you what do you, Ian have? Ian has mine and a probe. Ooh, very nice. Okay, let's bring him back to base. Nice drone design too, if it's an unusual one. There we go. Drop him off there. And we'll get Freya to grab some of those upgrades. So if we can swap with Ian, we'll grab ourselves the mine and the probe. There we go. We might use those later. For now, we're gonna take Odin and investigate the room next door. So far, this has been a very valuable place for us. There's some fuel, there's some scrap in here. Very nice. So let's gather all with you, and that'll get us a whole bunch of resources. Now, I believe the probe is like a wandering sensor, which is pretty handy, so it'll tell us, tell us if anything is in the room it's in. So that could be really good if our motion sensor is proving unreliable. And the uh, mine that we found is a proximity explosive that'll kill any enemies that step on it, which could be pretty handy as well. So we know this room is allegedly safe. We have another generator in here, which is interesting. Let's gather this. There we go. And I think we'll actually move our base of operations over to A5. So let's send Thor back into the ship, and we're going to do a little fancy maneuver here. So we close the airlock one. We are going to redock our ship at airlock 5. It'll take a second here, but it'll reappear nearby. There we go. We can now abandon that part of the ship. We open airlock 5 now, and we can send Thor into here to power this room instead. Fantastic. Now we have power on more of the ships. Let's do another motion sense here. R6 is safe, so it sounds like R4 is the room with dangerous enemies in it. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to send Freya into the next room to investigate what's in there so we can keep the motion sensor running. Because as soon as we move, the motion sensor stops. And that's not what we really want to be doing right now. So what we're going to try and do here is be a little bit sneaky. We close door 8, we're going to open door 12, and hopefully whatever enemy is in there will head into room 6 instead. Then we can lock the door behind them and eject them through the airlock into the depths of space. And hopefully nothing will go wrong. There we go, perfectly according to plan, ejected, and now that should be fine. There we go, let us send Odin in to investigate, or rather we'll send Frey in to investigate, why not? Hopefully there was only one type of enemy in here, so we should be okay, but yeah, it looks, look, looks pretty good so far. Ah, there is a vent in there, so we're gonna have to grab that stuff and get out quickly, but that was a pretty successful, very short and quick mission. Let's gather everything quickly here, and then we can get out. We'll type the end command, which sends all of our drones back to the starting location in our ship, in room number one, unless there's an obstruction in the way. But that went pretty darn well, I have to say. We got ourselves more free loot. Cannot complain about that, getting Ian here. So let's exit this ship and get out of here. Unfortunately, we still haven't gathered any fuel, which is not wonderful, but we have added an extra backup drone to our fleet, so we'll be able to use them if we need them. So, we're going to rename them, go to our drone configuration here, and rename Ian. There we go, you are now Balder. Congratulations, and welcome to the fleet. We might take Balder on some missions to swap people in and out here so we get a variety of drone shapes to look at, but I, uh, I'm happy leaving them damaged for now. We'll keep our scrap in case we need it. Let's head over here to this next beacon. 
for the off chance that we'll be able to get a single point of fuel here or two so we can maybe actually make it over to this station because I'd really like to see what those stations are all about. For now though, we have plenty of time so let's get moving. Alright, let's investigate this station. We have our team ready to go, we've got a variety of options available to us, let's board this ship and find out what it's all about. It's got three different types of infestation, which could be really dangerous to us. It's got a medium hull integrity, and we'll see if we can live through these things. Hmm, we have a message here from the Biocontrol Sector 2. We need to issue a warning to all decks, then. Ensure everyone is stir before drinking or washing. Last thing we need is a hundred sick people hands. Isolate the area where the highest levels and begin an investigation into how the this happened. Alright, so there's some kind of medical issues happening here, which is interesting because previously we didn't have a whole lot of real proof there was some serious medical problems. So we'll hopefully be able to find out some more information about this soon. Right now what we're going to do though is we're going to run some scans. Ooh, lots of stuff in here. Okay, well, let's gather all with you. We're going to move Thor over so the other people can get by him. Because right now he's kind of in the way. Can we even scoot by two in a row, in a row here? Barely. Hmm. That's a really unfortunate placement for the generator then, because it really does get in the way. Alright, well we're going to need to have the generator on anyway, so we'll power that. We'll go investigate some nearby rooms. This looks like a really small ship. It looks like it's only actually three rooms large. So we'll see what we can find inside. We know there's three types of enemy in here, which is pretty scary, honestly. Please give me the fuel we need. I would love that. Nope, no propulsion fuel acquired at all, so we only got one jump fuel, so that's not going to help us. Let's close D6 here briefly, do a quick motion check. We know that this room has got to be unhealthy, so if we open D4 here, we can vent them into space. They'll literally splatter against the front of our drone ship here, but hopefully nothing bad happens. There are three types of infection on board this ship. No idea what kind of nastiness that's going to involve. Oh, I shouldn't have moved. I moved the wrong drone there. Hmm. Let's close D4 again quickly, open D6, send Odin in and do a quick scan. Nothing else in there, that's fair. Alright, we're going to try and get them with the Fancy Pants motion testing maneuver again. But this time, we're not going to move the drone that's doing the testing. There's got to be something there in room 4, though. We know there's three types of infestation on this ship, so we can't afford to go in there on our own. I'd love to go see what there is. But unless we can clear the room first, it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. I don't know about this. We could just vent it and then see what's in the room afterwards, but if we vent the room first, it'll destroy any systems that are in the room. Things like computer consoles, fuel nodes, all the scrap will get vented out. Alright, this isn't looking like it's going to be too valuable to us, unfortunately, so we're going to have to end this mission. As much as I'd like to get into that last room, I don't think it's worth it at the moment. The odds of us not being able to get... Be able to survive whatever we find in there are pretty high. So we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to get out of here. So, we leave with our lives intact. Oh, really? The scan system is already breaking? So as, as you use items in this game, they have a chance of deteriorating over time. And that means that there is, a, in this case, a 17% chance that if we use the scan upgrade, it will break forever and become useless. So that's not a great chance for us. It's kind of unfortunate. This has been a really bad first area with almost no... We got, we got drones, which is good, but no fuel means we really can't explore as much as we'd normally hope to in our first sector here, so we're going to be forced to jump away to a different part of the galaxy. Maybe we'll try and come back later and explore some of the areas we haven't visited, but as it stands, we need to go elsewhere. So, we're probably... Can I control this manually? I can't get out of these two locations. I can only go up and down here. I don't want to go there yet. <laughs> I want to go to P, so I'll have to click P manually, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. So we're going to have to jump over to this new area and see what we can find over here, because evidently the galaxy does not want us to explore our current sector anymore, 
because it just has given us nothing to do it. When we jump to a new area, it'll refuel our propulsion fuel to at least a base level, and we can go from there again, so it's not like all is lost. Let us investigate, though. What are we looking at here? Just a bunch of ships. Okay. There's some space stations, which is not bad. A couple space stations, in fact, which might have some useful information on them. But as it stands, there's not a whole lot else going on there. So, let's jump our way over to this new galaxy, Hamawet, and we'll see what we can find there. Alright, we've jumped. What's going on in the system? We've arrived here in the Mary Curie. And uh, we're going to have to end this episode for now. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing a little bit of Duskers here for you. If you've enjoyed today's episode, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Thank you again very much for watching, and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye